Got one. Got another one. Good one. Got one. There we go. What is up, Fishing with Damon fans? So today we have a new video for you, of course. But first, before we get into this, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Hit that notification bell because you want to know when these videos come out, of course. And check out that comment of the day. So, obviously, if you want that comment, comment at the end of the video. Yada, yada, yada type stuff. Um, yeah, I won't blab on about that. But exciting, exciting fishing weekend. Um, we're going to be doing some smallmouth bass fishing. So, I want to talk a little bit about weather, bait choice, and just adapting to the environment in general of fishing um because tomorrow i did check the weather it's not gonna be anything like today it's raining and it's cold that's why i'm in the car filming this and not by the river i'd love to be on the dock putting my tripod there and filming it but um it's raining and it's cold so that doesn't sound like too much fun to me and i do this for fun so first off weather so tomorrow it's gonna be freaking hot 30 35 degree weather great day for boating maybe a little too hot for fishing but we're gonna be fishing anyways because that's what anglers do we fish um and we get we get through those tough times and we catch fish during those tough times just makes that hunt a little bit more interesting of course but with that 30 35 degree weather a lot of you guys might really struggle i i struggle too everybody does the fishing is tough um, it's tougher to get that bite. It's not as easy as it is in the spring. With that 15 to 20 degree weather in the springtime, and you're just casting out there almost all the time, you're getting big fish, landing lots of fish, whether it's smallmouth bass, striped bass, um, whatever you're fishing for, it's going to be a lot easier in the springtime. But when this summertime comes around, there's a lot of 30 degree weather days and most of us like me and probably you you only get weekends off right like you got the you got those two days and whatever weather it is that's what you're stuck with that's my scenario i work five days a week 40 hours that's what i'm going to be doing in the summertime that's what i get that so you got to adapt to those days because those are the only days you get there are some things you can do I mean, obviously, check up in advance, maybe do some research on on those hotter days, like look up different baits or watch videos like this. So with that in mind, you guys can obviously check up in advance, um, do some research. Those are the things I suggest and just try different things in the summertime. Now, with bait selection, I now this is a bait I fish a lot, even in the springtime. So it's not just a hot weather day bait, but um, the Ned Rig. So I'm going to show you one of the baits these first here. Now this is the 4-inch TRD. Um, so a little bit bigger in size. Now tomorrow though, I'll probably be using the smaller 2.5 inch. That's green pumpkin color. I'm going to just say it. Green pumpkin color is the best. It is honestly one of the best colors for any soft plastic. Um, just... Whether it's a Ned Rig, a Sanko, um, even Flukes, they work good. Um, tubes, everything. So, obviously, Tube is another good summer bait, of course. Um, good finesse bait. Obviously, I prefer finesse fishing in the summer. It is my style of fishing in the summer most often. Um, obviously, there are some moving baits that sometimes will get the work done. Especially in the mornings when it's a little colder, a little chillier. But... A lot of us, we don't get out that really early. I I don't get out at 5 a.m. and go fishing straight away. Personally, I go fishing for fun. And for me, I get those two days off. I do not want to wake up at 3 a.m. right away. It's not and just drive straight there for two, three hours. Now, I will do that occasionally, of course, for a bigger trip. We did that when we went musky fishing. We did that when we went striper fishing. But... I can catch them later in the day and enjoy my time more. Um, so, Ned Rigs. 
What are you gonna throw this thing on? This little thing. What are you gonna throw that on? These right here. I got a little case of them. So, this case is really important. So, first we're gonna start off with the one eighth of an ounce. Not gonna throw that very often. That's mostly for only lakes. I do not throw that in the river. Just um, too much current in the river. So, not very often we'll be throwing that. Uh, now this is two eighth of an ounce or quarter of an ounce, you can say. Um, yeah, you can throw that quite often, especially slack tide in rivers, uh, lower current rivers. Yeah, that'll be that'll be bombing them. Um, next, we got the three eighth of an ounce. That's the one I use the most, that, and that's as high as I go. Actually, I do have some higher ones, but I don't think I've ever went higher than this. I've never had to, because um, if you're throwing it in a place where you need more weight than this, so I suggest jerk baits or a fluke, something that's a moving bait, uh, not quite on the bottom, not quite on the top, something in that middle column where it gets just underneath those white caps. You'll see white caps in those rushing waters and you want, it to get, you want that bait to just get sucked under a bit. That's where, where the bass are gonna be feeding those high, high currents. So this isn't gonna be the bait for that, of course. This is a bottom bait. This, this You want this on the bottom of the river. You do not want this in a middle column, really. It's not a swim bait. This bait, you want, there's a couple techniques to it. And you'll see them throughout the video when I go fishing. Uh, one, my favorite way is, is just to lift that rod up slowly and reel in the slack. What that does is it just kind of hops it slightly. It's not a big hop and down. It's not going to go straight up and down. It's just a almost like a half moon type hop. That's I. That's a personal preference. Now you can fish this any way you want as long as it's on the bottom. You can literally just reel your line in straight and just drag it along the bottom really slowly. You can also do little shakes in your rod and just it'll bounce like that and it'll go down like. A, it, when you bounce it up and down like that, it'll look like a little fleeing crawfish. That'll work too. There's different ways you can do this. Just whatever is comfortable for you, whatever you have confidence in. Now, I, I just always had confidence in that method. I feel like it always worked. Maybe you think a different way works for this bait. And it does. I'm sure it does. Like, I've done all those techniques and they do catch fish either way. It's just the way I've always done it. And sometimes, you know what? It's really good to switch it up. I don't keep the same one. I try different ways. Some, sometimes the fish are just feeding differently that day. Maybe they seen a different bait fished the same way and they got caught. And maybe I'll take this one little different variable for them to trigger a strike. Whether maybe you add a little rattle into it, or you just retrieve it differently, or you put some scent on it, or just something different. Sometimes you just gotta try different things. If you're seeing there, especially on your sonar, you're seeing them there, you're not catching them, try something different. Personally, I've always, when you're not catching them, you're learning. That's the truth. And once you start catching them, remember what you did. Remember what you did. What did you do differently? You should always be focusing on what you learned because you can apply that the next time you have tough fishing. Be like, oh, this worked that time when I switched that. Let me try that. Oh, it's not working. Let's try something else again. So anyways, guys, we're going to wrap this up. See you guys on the water tomorrow. Peace out. So guys, we just arrived at the wharf. We got our Ned Rig tied on right there from the Ned Rig kit, of course. And we're going to go slay some fish and see you guys on the water. And
I'm gonna have to. There we go, guys. There we go, guys. Good little one pound smallmouth on the Ned rig. He just chomped that down. That's how you do it. And that drain right there, guys. We caught that fish. You see that drain there? That's what we want. We want some water flowing, and that's where we pulled out, guys. Good little fish. We're gonna release them. It's gonna be a little bit of a drop, but it's the best way to do it, I think. There he goes, guys. There he goes. Good smallmouth right there. There we go. See, Z-Man plastic, last tech right there. That, that it really just puts in the work. See if we can pull out another one. You never know. Got one. Got another one. Good one. Bring it over there. He's a fighter. Jeez. Come on, stay down. Woo! There we go. Another good smallmouth, guys. Another good one. That's what we talk about that Ned rig. Just puts in the work. We got that out. Good little small. We gotta get him back in quick. Good little, maybe one, one half. Uh, we're gonna give him a little. Let's try again over here. Maybe there's another one. Uh, we're gonna fish that side of it. No! There we go, guys. Another bass. <sighs> Thank you. Bunch of them here. Yeah. Yeah. This is the smallest one, but good little bass. I'm having a lot of fun. Can you just let me have like five more minutes? I mean, like, I just caught like three bass in like five minutes. I just caught like three bass in five minutes. Yeah. Some of them are good too. Right there is out of the sun, so. What if I just stay here? So, guys, we just finished using the Ned Rig kit. Um, we caught four or five bass pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, it was a little tough, but the Ned Rig bite always comes through in the summer. And if you're having trouble catching some smallies, especially in New Brunswick in this 35 degree heat like it is right now, Ned Rig's the way to go. I'm not joking here, like it's probably the best way to go. Jerk bait's another one. Of course, in the morning, if it's cooler, definitely that top water bite is amazing. Or if you want to do some pickerel fishing, go for that as well. That's going to be a lot easier. But Ned Rake bite is probably one of the best. You're going to want to hop that thing along the bottom, like I told you guys. And you'll just get that bite. So that's it for this video, guys. Make sure to comment if you want comment of the day featured in the next video. And please hit that subscribe button. I'm over here in 35 degrees filming videos. 
I think you guys can hit that subscribe button. Tell me your video ideas. Peace out, bye. Give this video a like, because if not, I'm gonna kill myself, bye. You know just what you do, you do to me. Play my emotions like a parrot.